In this lesson, I'm going to look at the way the feet and the legs work in the swing, and then into the hips and the torso and the body. So we're going to start from the ground up. And with modern coaches, the phrase from the ground up is definitely a catchphrase that's doing the rounds at the moment. When nothing's changed, players like Bobby Jones and Walter Hagen, they generated power off the ground. Um, but I think the danger is to think it's just about the ground and the legs and the hips. The fact is, it's about everything. It's about your hands, your forearms, your entire body. But we can look in detail today at the way the feet work. Now again, I give you the government health warning of keeping it simple. This is background information for you, explaining how it works. You don't want to be thinking about it when you're on the golf course playing golf and hitting shots. But for the students amongst you, and for a clear mind, if you've dealt with the theory, you can go out and worry about your score and not your swing. Uh, here's one of my sort of great heroes, Lee Trevino, one of Alex Hayes' drawings of Trevino. And Trevino is measured as having the, the longest contact through the ball, his extension towards the target, at the time they measured him back in the 70s, he had the best relationship of blade to target. He kept the blade square forever, and his footwork was of a particular type. Trevino played a fade mechanism, by the way. So, if we just drop back this picture of Alex's, let's say a picture paints a thousand words. Well, here we have the old-fashioned leg action that the British people were using right through until I came into the, career, into the profession in the early 70s, and we were talking about hitting against a brace left side. Now that was a throwback to Hickory. Hickory used to twist, and the club face would be open, so they used to hit against a firm left side to close the face. The trouble was, when they flipped the club like this, the club face was square for about a nanosecond. Your timing had to be perfect. Byron Nelson came along and he talked to Tom Watson and then it became Jack Grout coaching Jack Nicklaus. But this is the more modern leg action that came to the fore in the mid-70s. Tom Watson and Jack Nicklaus being the great exponent of this leg action and constant knee flex. You can see here also that the club is being kept square through impact for a lot longer. So I think that's one of the reasons the Americans dominated us for so long in the Ryder Cup. We were flipping the club and being square for a nanosecond and the Americans had the blade staying square almost forever. So the way the hands work and the way the knees and the legs work and the way the feet work are absolutely related. So we're going to go into the hitting studio now and I'm going to show you some of that in practice. So, continuing the subject, uh, from the ground up, we're talking about how the feet work within the golf swing. Now, like all things, preparation is key. You know my phrase, 90% of swing faults start at address, and the other 10% start at address as well. So, the feet have to be part of the set routine and have to be placed in the most effective way, in anticipation of the shot that you're going to hit. Obviously, the way that you put your feet in at a dress for a wedge or a chip will be very different to the way that you put your stance and your feet in for a, a long club like a driver. I've got a six on here, so let's just relate the pre-shot routine to the way that the feet work. So as you know, I'll get you to stand opposite the ball with your left foot and off the club. And when you offer the club, you know the height of your hands and your distance from the ball. But the first part of footwork is my right foot comes forward so that I've got something to, le to lean onto. If my foot stayed here, I would topple over. So I step in, blade and foot. I tip from the hip to build the grips. You, you've got this all dialed in, I know that. But last of all, we do the feet. And what we're looking for is the way of being 50-50 from toe to heel and 50-50 from left to right. So remember our procedure, club, grip, shoulders, hips, feet club, grip, shoulders, hips, feet, we're always doing the feet last. Not only are we getting the weight distribution perfect, we're shuffling the feet also to get the ball position right in relation to the club that we're hitting. So let's just watch that again. Step forward, tip from the hip to build the grip, then let the feet settle underneath you, 50-50 toe to heel and 50-50 left to right. Now, when I make the rotation to the top of my backswing, there's a mild weight shift to my right side. 30 years ago, they used to teach that 90% of your weight was on your right foot in the backswing. But with pressure sensors and modern video filming at high speed, um, golfing scientists have looked at it in detail, and in fact, the weight is not 90% in the backswing at all. It's much more like 60-40. So, 
I meant my rotation, and there is some weight shift, shift to the sole of my right shoe. Now I need to swing through and hit the shot. As I've released the shot, my weight has shifted, and my footwork is absolutely instinctive. But you'll notice what happens as I came through the shot. My weight rolled on the outside edge of my left foot, and the left knee was still flexed. So have a look at that from the front. There's my pre-shot routine. My feet are placed 50-50 toe to heel, 50-50 left to right. So now I load the shoulder, I coil. There's a weight shift to the right foot. Now I determine to drive the ball towards the target, and I come through. The left knee is staying flexed, and I drive the ball. Now you can see the weight shift. I've gone on the edge of my left shoe, and again, it's a characteristic of the modern player, particularly in Tom Watson and Jack Nicholas. Jack Grout taught Nicklaus to roll the feet, which is contrary to the teachings of the 50s and the 60s, which is still the brace left knee. Nicklaus got it from Jack Grout. Jack Grout was probably in, uh, influenced by Byron Nelson, and Byron Nelson coached Tom Watson. And when Tom Watson won his first Open, at Canusti in 1975, the thing that we noticed was that his knee flex was constant through the hitting area, and there was a big change then in the teaching movement. So broadly speaking, if your swing is in play and going back and going through, you'd expect the footwork to have weight shift the right foot going back, weight shift the left going through, and constant knee flex is a symptom of swinging in plane.